my name is Sandra Hunneman. I have been working for Bellin Hospital for about 15 years in MRI. Um, prior to that, I worked for about 10 years at NEW MRI. Um, so I've been in this field for 25 years. So I absolutely love it. When I started uh, schooling, I was 18 and I had absolutely no clue what I wanted to do. Um, so I dug deep and thought, what do I love? Which is, I guess, what I would say to you guys is don't do what someone else thinks you should do, do what you have a passion for. Um, so I knew that my passion was. Um, patient care. I wanted to do something in patient care and I really liked science class. So I thought maybe I should do something in the medical field. Um, so I opened up the phone book and I started going through and I found the Bellin School of Radiology. So that intrigued me. I did a tour. So I highly recommend doing tours for sure of schools that you're looking into. Um, so I did a tour of the school. At that time, they only accepted six students. Um, and they weren't going to be starting until the following summer. So I had a semester. So I thought it would be advantageous for me to go to UWGB or TC, take some type of schooling or class that might help me um, in that field that I was going into. So I went to UWGB just for one semester and I did a uh, biology class. And I also did a Taekwondo class just to for fun because you gotta when you're doing in the medical field you have to have a good balance for yourself so I did those um, and then I started my schooling in uh, 90, 1994. So I was two years into that. Um, the great thing about the radiology field is you don't have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, there's programs within Green Bay that offer um, a four-year bachelor's degree in radiology, or you can do the technical school where they offer two years and you have an associate's degree. Um, pretty much in the state of Wisconsin anyway, it's more about a licensure and not a degree for what we do. Um, so if you choose to do the two-year route, which um, a lot of people do, and then they start to work in a hospital or a clinic, um, many of those clinics will then give you money to go back to school to get your bachelor's degree. So that's sort of a nice, um, perk with doing that. And then some people, some kids, they're in that school mode and they just want to keep going until they get their four-year bachelor's degree. So that's um, another option that you have. So mine led me, um, I did my two-year schooling and at that time, and even presently, you don't have to go to school for MRI, what I do. Um, most of what we do is on-the-job training. Uh, all schools, usually um, technical schools and the um, the four-year bachelor's school do offer MRI um, sections where you can uh, rotate through for like two weeks, three weeks at different hospitals to get a taste of what it's like, um, to get a good feel of what we do. So you can see what we do on an average day, as opposed to just reading um, something in a book. So typically my average day is, um, what we have to do prior to the patient even coming to see us is we screen all of our patients in MRI. And that's because we deal with a very, very strong magnet. Um, we have a 1.5 Tesla and a three Tesla magnet. We have uh, five magnets actually at Bellin, um, but HSHS has magnets, um, St. Vincent's, Prevea, St. Mary's, Aurora. Um, everyone has different magnet strengths. Um, and that's what we deal with. So we have to be very careful when putting a patient into our environment that the patient is safe, that they don't have a pacemaker. And if it is, it has to be MRI safe. Um, many people don't understand when they have stents, wires, clips, bullets, things like that, that though some of those metals are metals that's attracted to the magnet. So we can't have them in there um, if it's unsafe. So we have to screen them before. Um, we bring the, once we screen the patient for a second time, um, we bring the patient back with us. Uh, the most we typically spend with a patient is one to two hours um, at the most. Um, we tend to scan just on one scanner. We can scan up to um, 10 to 15 patients a day. So you're not with a patient for a long length of time, but patient care is extremely important. Um, in our 
jab, we have many people that are claustrophobic. So um, to get them through a test, for people that like to be in small spaces and don't like loud noises, MRIs are a struggle. Uh, so you really have to take your time and you really have to have good patient care. Um, it's one of our most important things. So we get done with a scan and we can scan pretty much any body part. Um, we get finished and we have one-on-ones with radiologists. They look over our pictures that we're doing, our scans. Um, they let us know if we need to do more pictures so that they can evaluate what's going on with that patient. Um, they do a report and then that report gets sent back to their primary doctor and then they leave for the day. Um, so that's our, uh, the length of time our interaction is with a patient. So this is what a scanner looks like. You can see maybe why people are claustrophobic. One of the most important things with MRI is that you don't move. Um, and our typical scan, there's not usually one that's shorter than 30 minutes, but taking pictures with an MRI is based off of the water in your body. So if you can imagine moving a glass of water just a little bit, how it causes ripples in the glass, MRI will do the same thing. Um, so it's very important, but very difficult for some people to lay there for that length of time um, and hold still that whole time. So that's a 1.5, a three Tesla won't really look much different. Um, same look, just a different magnet strength. We have antennas very much um, like, you guys probably don't remember rabbit ears. In my day, we had rabbit ears on our TV to get good signal. These are coils that we use when we're scanning different body parts. It's kind of like having an HDMI cord hooked up to your Xbox or a game like that. You're gonna get much better pictures if you can use things like what you see on the screen. These are basically our antennas so we can see what we're looking at. I'll just show you a few pictures of what it looks like when we scan. Um, I don't know if you guys can take a quick guess in your head because I don't think I can hear you, but this is probably our most common scan that we do. This is a head scan and we do them in different planes, side to side, front to back, top to bottom, um, all the way through the head, just very thin, thin pictures. So you can go ahead. Same thing. You can do the next one too. This is a vessel study, so we can actually make your brain disappear and just show your blood flow. Um, so the one on the facing my left would be of the head and the longer looking one, that's what we call your carotid, your neck vessels. You can go ahead. Now this I would relate with Melissa. Melissa does the neurological, she sees the neurological effects that patients have, facial droop, things like that. I'm on the other end, she sends patients to us and we scan their brain. And unfortunately that white area, that's what you would call a stroke. Mm -hmm. So they send patients for a CAT scan or an MRI. Um, and this is unfortunately a stroke um, on MRI. You can go ahead. I'm gonna keep Lynn clicking fast. This is, um, if anybody wants to do a quick guess in their head, this is a neck scan. So we look at the um, fluid coming down is bright white. Um, the cord is the dark part right behind those vertebral bodies. So we look to make sure that there's not uh, a disc popping out. A lot of times people can have parents that or friends, family members that have numbness to their arms. A lot of times that's coming from their neck. Um, you can go to the next one again and go ahead one more and this would be your back so when people are getting symptoms in their lower legs a lot of times they'll have their low back scanned and that's what that looks like you can go ahead and that's called the lumbar spine um, and that's a side to side and front to back if anybody has a quick guess that's okay you can go ahead um, this is what your knee looks like we see a lot of we have out at title town clinic we scan a lot of orthopedic injuries that's primarily what we do out there so a lot of athletes you can go ahead um, this would be hips or a pelvis to give you a good look at that front to back and then a top to bottom picture slicing through the body that way you can go ahead um, this would be, if anybody has a quick guess in your head, but that's your shoulder, different angles through your shoulder, you can go ahead. Um, anybody have a quick guess? That's your wrist. So again, front, back, we always have three planes, front, uh, front to back, side to side, and top to bottom. You can go ahead. And this would be your ankle. And you can keep going. 
This one would be your abdomen. So we can see liver and kidneys. Um, we're pretty much looking for any pathology. Most things that come through to us, they usually have come in with a symptom. The doctor will tell us what he's looking for. And then it's our job to help figure out what's going on. So you can go ahead. That would be a breast. We do, um, they have breast uh, mammals and MRIs that they do. Um, and I will add with this, that's the other nice thing about getting into the field of radiology is you can get into that field and maybe feel like you want to expand further. Um, it is a uh, imaging has many modalities that you can go to from there. So maybe you're doing imaging, but then you realize I want to go into CAT scan or I want to go on to ultrasound or I want to go into mammals. That would be, um, this would be a good field if you have a direction, but you're not exactly sure what you want to do, and you have opportunities to advance in many different areas. So you can go ahead. You could probably keep going through the images. And so this is why I do MRI. Um, every single day is different. I love it. I love the patient care. Um, it is called the gold standard for imaging. So we are constantly changing, constantly advancing. Um, things are becoming new all the time. Um, so it's never just like pretty much any of the Jessica or Melissa that spoke today. Every day is a different day um, and every day is exciting. Um, you should just always be loving what you do.